to our meeting today of dealing with our Cuba cruise and Montego Bay uh, excursion. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Jeff Willer, and uh, it is a pleasure to have you here today and for having you join us on our excursion as we go over to Cuba and to learn about the, the Cubans and their history, a little bit on their agriculture. Uh, also at the meeting today is uh, Suzanne with uh, Jamestown Travel. She's the one who helps take care of all of our airline stuff, making sure everything's good. If I have questions on anything, uh, I visit with Suzanne on it, and uh, she, she helps out. And then uh, Ken Van Roekel from Mayflower Tours, and he's going to be going over the uh, documents and going through the one sheet that's in your folder there, and then we'll uh, we'll just kind of tag team the things as we're going through it and uh, let you know and see everything. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is on that list, uh, there's 44 people. I think I counted on the list of uh, names that we got of our travelers. We did not fill the group up with just our group. And so uh, Mayflower Tours, I did give them the, um, we did the contract, I did give them the leeway to fill it with other other people. Uh, we will do, uh, when we get to do our tours and everything, I'll be working with uh, Louise and, uh, did I say that right? Luis. Luis. I'll be working with Luis and uh, making sure that we're doing what we can so you know where we are so we are, so we will be together as a group when we do the tours. And the excursions off the ship? Correct. On the excursions off the ship, correct. Uh, he will make sure that we are together between him and I and Maria, we'll make sure we're all together. Now some of the questions have been, and I don't know if you can zoom in on the, uh, up on top up there, Chris. Uh, who's traveling with who? Right now, all of our flights are Fargo and Bismarck. Did you get that? And uh, so right there, uh, those of you, uh, we've got Shirley and Roger here, and uh, Muslims uh, all sitting right here. Uh, you four are right together right there. So you guys can kind of look for each other. And uh, uh, at the airport, you guys will be together. And then there will be uh, Vanna and James and Karen. Uh, Karen and Vanna are a mother and daughter. Some of you have been on some of our other uh, overseas excursions. Uh, Karen and Vanna are the mother and daughter that travel together. And Arlene will be traveling with uh, James, and then uh, Verna and Rodney uh, are from Kilburn, and then they'll be joining joining you in Bismarck also. For Fargo uh, uh, people, we are also leaving at five o'clock. So both of us, our flights are departing at uh, five o'clock, uh, taking off, uh, and we'll all meet up in Minneapolis. And so there's. Uh, Eula, Olsons, myself, we will all be in Fargo, as well as uh, Palmer, who's uh, your relatives, and so he'll be joining us. Phyllis Lentz and Virginia are from Fargo, they'll be joining us. Buell is here. Uh, Anita and Tom Seymour, uh, they'll be joining us over there. And then my, my wife, and she'll be here shortly. We will all meet as a group in Minneapolis. And then from Minneapolis to Atlanta, we're on Delta flight 1122, and then Atlanta to Montego Bay, uh, Delta 361. So once we get to Minneapolis, our whole North Dakota group will be together as uh, one group uh, when, we, when we take off there. A couple things on the park and fly hotels. For Bismarck, we've got the Ramada Limited Suites, the rate is 75 plus tax. And what they do there is they don't have a shuttle van per se right there, but they will take and they line it up for the taxi to meet you. They give you a voucher to give to the taxi and then likewise when you come back, they'll uh, call the taxi and then they'll bring you back to the hotel. Uh, otherwise, the expressway suites is 109. They do have their own shuttle that takes you over there. And the Ramada, they're just starting the shuttle thing. Uh, we use their hotel a lot on other things. 
Uh, the expressway suites, I know, have been doing the park and fly rates for a long time there. And, uh, but those are your two. The ex expressway suites is a little bit closer to the airport, but both of those will work. The element, uh, she didn't have the rate for me yet in Fargo, and we were just starting to use them and working really well with this, but apparently they had some abuse to the system. And so she didn't give me the rate yet, but it's usually that $85, $86 rate right there uh, for the Farmers Union uh, tour rate. However, because of the abuse that they had, they have now implemented a $10 per day parking fee to leave your car. There. So nine days, that'll add another $90. I think I paid 72 plus tax at the day's end. At the day's end? Okay, this was the rate that he gave me uh, when I called up there the other day what, what their park and fly rate was. So if you got it, the 72 is their rate usually without the park and fly. Were you leaving a car or were you just? No, because they never guaranteed me a plug in. Okay, so if you weren't leaving a car, you, you most likely got a lower right, rate. Right. If you're leaving a car, it's a hundred and nine ninety-nine or yeah, one hundred and nine plus plus the tax. Uh, if you're leaving a car at the days end. So if you're not if you're staying up there and not leaving a car, then they'll give you the, uh, a, a cheaper rate. But that's our two hotels, uh, the two locations. And they have shuttles. And uh, days in has a shuttle. And they've been really good. That one time when we, there was quite a few of us staying up there, he had to make three trips till he got us all shuttled back and forth. Um, so those who had to get going right away, we had them on the first shuttle, and then we just kind of worked, worked, worked it out, and, and it all worked out fine. Uh, my wife, Maria, has just come in. So Maria, if you want to wave in the back there or stand up, but she'll, be our, she'll be our other co-host on this and helping out. Uh, as as we do everything uh, on the trip and helping when we do the tours and go off land, uh, she'll make sure between uh, her I and Luis that uh, we have you all together uh, as we go off. Our first hotel and that we'll be going to when we get there is uh, Montego Bay. Uh, it's the Hilton Rose Hall Resort. So here's a picture uh, looking over at the resort where we'll be staying at Montego Bay. And we'll have two nights there and at the direction of Suzanne when we set this all up. Uh, she encouraged us to add an extra day just because to allow for weather. Now, I don't know if you noticed the weather the other day, but they had three inches of snow in Atlanta and it shut them down. They had hundreds of flights canceled in Atlanta uh, because of the weather. And so, all that clears through that everything catches back up again so thanks to Suzanne uh, we did put in an extra day and if everything flies through smoothly we'll have a full day, extra day at Montego Bay and I know uh, Maria and I were looking at different things uh, they have a lot of excursion type things that you can sign up for right there at the resort they have a lot of free things right there at the resort that you can do they actually have a calendar of daily events so you can sign up and see, okay, this is going out at this place now, this is going on here, this is going, going on, I think they even had a bingo, a lot, something bingo at one of the places. Uh, I know they had water fights, they had uh, sand volleyball. They had some walks. They had different nature walks, walks, nature walks that you could go on and um, different things like that. Of course, in the evenings or towards nighttime, they have bands and music. And yeah, so and that's all part part of it. Uh, and please mention it's all inclusive. It's all inclusive, yep. So anything you do out the resort, the excursions, if you go off site on those excursions, those are extra. And of course my wife thinks it's really cool to hang from wires. And, and so we're, line, we're, looking, yes. we're looking at zip lining activities to, to do uh, on, as one of our excursions. As a resort, you have to take American credit cards? Yes. Yes. So you, can, you can buy the mm -hmm. excursions. Maybe. I got the card. The only place that will not take U.S. cash or credit card is Cuba, land. The ship is U.S. currency. 
So the only place you need anything besides U.S. currency, our U.S. credit card, is when we are on land at our three different ports in Cuba. Uh, three, the one port that closed up on us uh, because it was the nature one going to the beach. They closed that one off. <laughs> they, 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 they decided that there was too many people coming in and it was taken away from the natural beauty <laughs> of the nature. So don't make it topless, I, or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, this is our ship. This is our ship right here that we'll be on. Uh, it's, a, it's a smaller cruise ship. Uh, 900 people, a little over 900 people. And so uh, it, it'll be nice. It, I, it, it won't be 4,000 people. And so you'll have you'll have a little bit of space to move around on there and and those things. Three restaurants, three restaurants, five bars, swimming pool, exercise room, massage room, small casino, small casino uh, a neat little place. And so right now I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Van Rokel, and he's going to go over. The uh, one form that came in the packet here. The oyster form. The oyster colored form. The oyster form. We're, we're learning our colors today. So, uh, that's why I pulled your oyster form. You can see the That's all included. All yep. included. Yep. And that's, uh, and that, and we'll, 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 what we'll do is, yep, that's the one. And what we'll do is we'll cover this here, and then once we're through, and then we'll uh, get questions at the end there then. Uh, so he'll go through on the main travel tips and then we'll just touch on a couple other things that we have. Yes. Thanks again. Because on this oyster piece, you're going to have all the information you really need. I just, I love to be here. I'm Kent Van Ruckel. I probably represent Mayflower Tours. Excited for you guys. Love to be going with you. Um, but uh, this oyster piece is really answers a lot of the questions that I've already gotten and some that you're asking now. But the key is this is kind of your, your, your guideline, okay? If you have other questions, feel free, you know, feel free. But I'm just going to start right at the top of page one. You're going to find out, you know, you can't go to Cuba unless it's on a people-to-people -people license, which we have, which you've signed up for. That's why you can go and other people can't. You just can't fly to Cuba yet. They tried it for a little while, and that's one of the things, the rules changed with our new president. So, people to people is more in effect than ever. So, when you read down here, um, itinerary note. U.S. law requires the U.S. citizens on the cruise to adhere to the full schedule, uh, both on board and ashore. Deviation from the itinerary, even in part, is not permitted. Um, do we have people leave the cruise and go walk on their own? Absolutely. But they're not recommending it. They want you to stay with the group. They want you to learn, meet the people, and do the itinerary. So, um, do I have to hold your hold your hands and tie you up to walk along the tree? You know, you have to walk. Of course not. <laughs> but I think that's what you signed up for. I want to meet the people and learn the culture. And that's what we're going to do on this trip. So um, I don't want to scare people with it as much as that's the rules. Secondly, you can't actually be on the beach in Cuba because it's not part of a people to people. So is it illegal to be on the beach of Cuba? You know, it's, it, the itinerary is pretty well laid out. You know, a little bit of free time, but most of it it's nice and organized. You know where you're going, and you get to, you get to experience the culture. That's what you're going for. So as you work down here, um, I mentioned a little bit earlier, but uh, the fourth little star there, right above the word document, says keeping documents on file. The people, the people, laws. Our government says you need to keep this. OFAC says keep your documentation for five years beyond your trip. So they can always come back and they can check the passport and they can say, oh, you're in Cuba, where's your documents? They can actually ask for those for five years. So just keep them. I know a lot of you do. It's a souvenir. Keep the itinerary. So that's, I have to legally tell you, yeah, keep your itinerary. Documents as you say, going through. I need your passport, or you'll, you'll need your passports along. And when you get on the ship is when you get your Cuban visa. That's the Cuban visa. So I'm going to board the ship. 
after my two nights at that lovely place we just saw. I'm going to board the ship. I'm going to give them the passport. They're going to read the information. And that's where they're going to fill out and give you your Cuban visa. That allows you to go in. That's your invite. Yes? Do they keep the passport? No, you keep the passport. Often they might keep them the first day on the ship just to register them. But most of the time the cruise ships now are so quick because they're going to make you, they're going to take your credit card for, for cover incidentals. They're going to look at the passport to identify to create your visa. And if they're quick about it, they'll hand it right back and you're off. They're also going to print you a card. You'll have a credit card to carry on the boat. That's your identification. You check off the ship and then you check back on so they know who exactly is on the boat and who's not. If you charge something at the store, you can put it on your credit card, on your, on your little card. Mm -hmm. This little ID card is what you'll carry for the next seven days. <coughs> so, um, at the end of the cruise, you'll get a bill under the door and it'll have, you owe this much for the gift shop, this much for the Tropicana show, and these three adult beverages up and beyond the drink package, which we'll get to next. But, um, the visa will be there. So it's already taken care of and included. If you flip over to page two, you go down that first, it talks about insurance. Yes, sir. You want to mention, like, and maybe that comes up later in there, when they get their visa, mm -hmm. that's also the time they will collect the $35 cash per person for the deportation or for your uh, tax for Jamaica. Jamaica? Uh, departure tax is $35 per person U.S. cash. So when you get on the ship, they're going to collect $35 from everyone. It's cash. Depart tax. It's cash, U.S. dollars. Cash only, no credit card. On the $35. So make sure you have at least $70 cash for the couples. That's $35 per person. That is coming up next. Oh, okay. <laughs> I jumped. But on the second page, on the top, it says if you're trying to purchase your purchase. While you're in Cuba, they, add, um, they ask for more insurance than the typical policy. Mayflower already built in extra health insurance. That's the law. So we just built it in. If you bought our insurance or not, if you bought our insurance, there's a toll-free number here and the policy number. Sometimes it's kind of handy to know where that is. Are you, everybody with me here? Bottom page two? Or top page two? Top page two. Right above where it says departure tax. See that number? There's the phone number. There's the policy number. If you have a question before you leave, you got a question when you get home, call that number. They're the insurance people, I'm not. Okay? And it's right there. Right below that, it says departure tax. There's what Jeff's talking about. That is the tax that we're talking about. I think I'm just disconnected. I just unplugged it. That's okay. That's power. So, okay. All right. There's that tax. U.S. dollars are accepted. $35 per person. One time for leaving Jamaica. That's how they make money. <laughs> Tourists and scum. Everybody pays 35 bucks to leave. So Is it both times you leave Jamaica? Nope. Just the once because that was an overnight. If you overnight in Jamaica, that's why cruise people don't have to pay it. But since you're going to be there two nights, you pay the overnight tax. So if Jeff doesn't pay for me, I have to stay in Jamaica? You would have to stay in Jamaica. No cruise. Yeah, thank you. Ah, I didn't think about that right here. Hell, there are no shots required. So don't worry about it. no shot. There are none required. But it does say below on medications. I still put those in. They want them in your legal. This is you know, true for flying as well. All medications in their legal label bottles. If you get the econo size, go to your drugstore and ask for a travel bottle. But if you're going on a 9-day, 10-day Cuban cruise, you probably want to take about 15 days of medication. So whatever you need, they need to be in their regular bottles so they can see. It's for Jeff Willer. This is the dose. This is the doctor's name. If you've got three of those, you need three different bottles. You can't take a pill a day trip. Now, once you've flown... And once you get on the ship, you can put them in your pillow day tray. But you can't fly with them in a pillow day tray. If they can't identify them, they have the right to throw them away. We don't want that. It's too expensive. Does that make sense? 
Vitamins. Vitamins. Not quite as essential. I cheat on that. I take my aspirin bottle and I can't see through. I got vitamins, I got my calcium, and then I've got my Advil. Sounds like Advil, looks like Advil, must be Advil. But if you get caught, no, I didn't tell you that. So the medications, I just keep all those. If you have a liquid medication, remember when you fly, all your liquids, paste, and gels, up to three ounces go in a Ziploc bag. So you all get three ounces in one Ziploc bag, one quart size. So if your makeup doesn't fit in one bag, put it in your partner's bag, get the rest in there. Because that's the one thing you're going to need to show when you get to the airport. As you go through security, they want you to set out your backpack, your bag, your carry-on, and your Ziploc bag, liquid space and gels. I get dry eyes when I fly, so I take eye drops. It's a liquid. Lip balm is a paste. It's supposed to be lip, lipstick and balm. It's kind of iffy. But if you have a cosmetic they can't identify, put it in there. Ziploc bag, liquids, paste, and gels. You put it in there, it goes to the x-ray machine. Um, some of you aren't 75. No, you probably have to put your shoes in there. Take off your belts. The scans nowadays are for density. You got a, you got a uh, Kleenex in your pocket, it might show up. I wrote lifesavers once. Gee, I thought they carried in a gun. <laughs> the bells went off. Uh, but that's all part of here. The, my key here is medications you always want with you. You don't put those in your check bag and put them in your carry-on. So I want my carry-on clothes, right? They don't need to see your medications. You just need to carry them on because I don't want them to lose them in, in the, on the flight. So you always have those in your carry-on. Right? That's the medication. Luggage. You're all going to get luggage. You get one 50-pound bag per person. And of course, you get a carry-on. Ladies are always lucky they can have a purse and a carry-on. But I always tell people, how much are you going to need on a carry-on? You bring your one change of clothes, you bring your medications, and a magazine to read on the plane. Headphones, what else do we need? Don't overpack your carry-on. Everybody <laughs> carries it. Big bag. If you can't carry your own carry-on, it's too much. You don't need that much. Computer. If you bring your computer, yep, you may. Um, the computer, though, you're going to bring, you're going to put it into the, um, that's when you have to show when you go through security, you don't want the computer on. Now keep in mind, Wi-Fi on the plane or on the boat, quite expensive. So I'll warn you up front, if you're going to get Wi-Fi on the boat, if you've cruised before, you know, they can charge pretty, you know, I'm talking like $9 for two hours. It doesn't work very good. It doesn't work. <laughs> and it doesn't work very good. It's true. So I'm going to tell you, you're kind of going to be, this is one chance you can hang up the phone, turn off the phone, and don't worry about it for seven days. You can actually get away. Because if you jump online and you get $9 for two hours and you get a couple messages out, hey, we made it, we're safe, it's great, sun's shining, Glad you're there. That's like I always tell my brother. Glad you're there. Wish you were here, you know. But uh, on, uh, once you're on the boat, don't, you will not have cell phones. Only way to use a cell phone is on a Wi Fi phone call. Anybody made a Wi Fi phone call? Like I said, just you're going to be out of touch. Yes? The 50 pound bag, does that yes. count for airline also? Correct. And it's for the airline. That's why I say 50 pounds. The ship won't give you a, a, a dead a weight, but all that's for the airline, 50 pounds. So there's your luggage, okay? So now on the bottom of page two, we're talking about luggage. I never see them measure the bags, but they always weigh them. So make sure your weights. When you get uh, a little later, we'll talk about that uh, temperatures we're going to expect. On the bottom of page three, it says what to bring. My favorite on this one is sunscreen. We don't think a lot about sunscreen this time of year. In fact, can you even buy it this time of year? I'm sure there's a place that do. Don't forget your sunscreen. It's, you're gonna get frost. Bring a hat, gentlemen, if you wear a hat. Um, cash, I like that fifth one down, it says cash. 
And by the way, bug spray is on there. I never needed bug spray. It's been there twice. Do they have Zika there? Zika, uh, not, you know, Cuba hasn't been a hot spot, no. So do they? I can't say no, but it hasn't been a red flag. It hasn't been an epidemic thing, you know, when warning types of country. It has not, like Brazil. But when you go down, you'll see cash. Cash and ATM uh, machines are not readily available in Cuba. You can't use a credit card to buy souvenirs, to buy rum, to buy cigars, to buy anything on like that. There's no contact. So that's why I say there's no cell phones, therefore there's no ATMs, there's no credit cards. There's no American industry in Cuba. Part of why you're going is the, the experience of non-American. And going before they open it up. Once they open it up, you'll have plenty of McDonald's, Subways. And credit cards and cash cards, is there a difference? Neither are accepted because they use the same transition. Transactions are through the same electronic system. Is there cash limits on the use of it? The what? Is there limits? There's no, There's no use. use. No use. And you need thousand dollars and you don't have a problem. Take cash, take what you need. Yep. Take what you need. Cash. Cash is king. We'll talk about the conversion here in a second. So, um, on the bottom of page three, the bottom, bottom, bottom line. Suggested not required attire, uh, attire for the captain's dinner in the gala sport suit or sport coat for the gentleman, cocktail dress or pantsuit for the ladies. Not required. Don't bring a tie. You have a button up shirt. All they're trying to do. They want to get away. No jeans and no tennis shoes in the dining hall. That's the rules. No jeans, no tennis shoes in the dining halls. So dress nice. You know what I joke about the captains there? Wear something clean. Yeah, come on, you'll be there a few days. Wear something clean, you'll be fine. We look nice that night. We're cleaned up, we're spiffed up. It's not a suit and tie night. It kind of says, it is. sure sounds like it, right? Dress nice. That you guys hear no tennis shoes? In the dining hall for dinner. No tennis shoes in the dining hall for dinner. Right. All of the three restaurants in Cap Bear Tennis Shoes? They're suggesting not. The evenings are uh, smart casual. Smart casual is above tennis shoes. Jeans and tennis shoes. They don't want them in the dining hall. Now, will some be more relaxed than others? I guarantee it. But I'm just saying the evenings are just a little nicer. Next page on top of three. This is always the fun one. Currency. The currency down in Cuba is called the Cuban Universal Currency. CUC is a kook. So they, they give, you give them a hundred dollars, they give you 87 kooks. So it's a one-to-one -one conversion. There's a 13% <laughs> exchange fee. As you get off the boat, they have little terminals set up. They're almost tent-like. You can give them a hundred dollars, they'll give you 87 kooks. So the exchange is as you get off the boat in all these little places, they, it's practically set up like tents, little buildings. You get off the boat, you want a little pocket cash, you want some kooks for postcards. Well, they're not big in postcards yet because they're not real touristy yet. But every time I go back, there's more tourism. But well, you'd have to have stamps too. And stamps, if you're sending a postcard, you know, you'll have to find stamps. So you go out to buy them. They're not going to take a credit card. They're not taking American cash. So you need coops. Mm -hmm. Their other form of money is the peso. You won't even see a peso. That's the Cuban economy. They pay their salaries in pesos. So we have coops and they have pesos. So you probably won't see a peso. You probably won't see it. Is there a limit on using the Wi-Fi? Can you mail things home directly from your Wi-Fi? Mail things home from your wife. Well, whatever information you've got. How much limit do you have on transferring information? I would tell you, um, well, if I with the price of it, send in pictures, might be a tough. Yes. Might be tough. It'll take all day. If it takes an hour to send a picture, you don't want to send a picture. It's going to cost a lot to send a picture. What's funny is Facebook is instant. If you have a Facebook account, put it on Facebook. I'm serious, it's the quickest thing here. But you still need Wi-Fi to hook up to your 
Facebook, right? right? So keep that in mind. There's no free Wi-Fi on this trip. It's not available like it is here. Yeah. So the, the Wi-Fi, Roger, when you're on the ship, they will take, and when you go down to the concierge to get your card for your room and all that there, and if you want to buy Wi-Fi, they will say, there's these packages, and each package is so much data. <coughs> and then you would buy according to the data that you want. Two hours, one day, seven days. Yeah. How much do you want to buy? You know, you, you buy it by the time, and if you buy like two hours, it's not I was on 15 minutes here, and then I got an hour 45 minutes left. You, you went on here, your two hours is that continuous. It's not on and off. So if you use 15 minutes out of that two hours, you're done. You're, done. Uh, you're not going to be able to come back later and sign on again to you to use the other. So uh, Wi-Fi, they get you, and uh, you have experience with it. It's it's real small. It's it's like it's like like uh, you're on a phone or the dial up. It's like the old dial up. Dial -up. Even smaller than that sometimes. So. <laughs> So if you buy an internet package for Wi-Fi, just remember that if you buy like a two-hour segment, that two hours cannot be split. It's all at one time. The Facebook, there's no problem. Facebook, you still have to buy the Wi-Fi. Still have to buy the Wi-Fi. You still have to buy the Wi-Fi. He's just saying on Facebook, they're set up for Facebook somehow where they can download and send that stuff faster than if you're just doing something over here. So. But you, you still have to find the Wi-Fi. Yes. You can use Facebook on the ship yep. on your computer. Yep. On the ship, they're not off. Not, not off, off the ship. Correct. Only on the ship. You're not going to want to take your computer online because you're not going to have any place to plug it in or to sit down to do anything online with it over in Cuba. Okay. Good point. Good question. So when it comes to those currencies, you're going to be carrying some kook in your pocket. I always think it's great because they have a three-dollar bill. How many people have a three kook bill? It's kind of cool. It's a nice souvenir to bring home. Um, then they have some coins as well. Like, uh, uh, you want to convert enough because you don't want whatever you take home, we call that a souvenir. Because you, it's very difficult to exchange it back. So um, can you exchange it back? Um, yes, but it's going to cost you so much it's almost not worth it. Secondly, where are you going to exchange it back? We're not going to the Cuban airport. So when you get off the ship, you're in Jamaica. They don't want Cuban money. So basically, spend it when you're in Cuba because once you get off the ship, it's souvenirs, <laughs> right? Now, I'm going to give you one treat, uh, one one secret. You did not hear this from me. Can we turn the thing off? But you know what I mean. Uh, so back to money. You have a question on money? Does it help? You're not going to be able to go to the bank and get some more. You can't go to an ATM and pull up more cash. Bring enough cash, and then when you get home, you still got cash. <laughs> Once you convert it, it's pretty much yours. And the other people in the group, Jeff, Jeff, hey, I got an extra 500 kooks. Anybody need some kooks? You know, just let them know. You know, if you have too much. But, Is there any recommended amount? Million dollar question simply, are you gonna buy a 500 cigars or are you gonna buy just souvenirs? You may have 100 bucks might get you. $100 goes a long way for me. <clears throat> then I need cigars, then I need, yeah. Our wrong. You know, if you're wanting to buy some rum or different things like that, you know, you'll you'll need a little bit more. Uh, and originally, I was looking at us taking more than uh, originally. I was looking at us doing 500 a piece. Yeah. I was but just... now, so that would be a thousand for us. That's way more than I know than what we're going to need in Canadian. Oh. However, I guess I'm kind of planning a little bit if somebody runs a little bit short. They can get a loan, and we can I, 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 we can help out because the biggest thing is like the shows at Havana. Uh, originally, when I read the stuff, uh, if you go to one of the shows at Havana, which we'll be getting to later, uh, I was thinking you had to pay for that in uh, Cooch, but no, we buy it on the ship, and it goes right on our room account. So that was a hundred bucks a show, a person per show that. I was thinking I was going to need cooks for that I'm not going to need. So right there, I was that's $200 less than what we need, you know. So because I, we can get that on the ship. 
Some of the things I was thinking that we were going to have to pay for in coops on shore can be taken care of on the ship right on with our credit card. Which is the next section, credit cards and traveler's checks. Page four, second uh, bold print. Credit cards and traveler's checks, if you go right below it, Cristal, the Celesto boat. The currency aboard the ship is the U.S. dollar. Visa, MasterCard, American Express, U.S. issued debit cards, cash cards um, are accepted. Personal checks are not. So when you get your bill, you can pay with your credit card. You can pay with your cash card. You can pay with cash. You can't use your check. But you can use your credit card. There's no service charge for using the credit card? No. In fact, it'll be their the day conversion. Because when you use a credit card any place international, it's today's currency conversion. So, um, uh, Jamaica, the currency in Jamaica is the Jamaican dollar. However, U.S. dollars are widely accepted. They're glad to take a U.S. dollar. So in Jamaica. So, uh, we'll get to that tip. You asked the question about the cash card. Yeah. I was in Europe in 15. Yeah. And they prefer the cash card. In fact, the Visa card, the credit card, you could have trouble getting rid of it. Okay. Okay. Now, I don't know that this would a different world. Probably yeah. the, new, the new system, they want a uh, Visa, Visa or MasterCard because it's insured. Cash cards are not. Oh, okay. Okay. Calls and internet, cell phones. There's no cell phone service in Cuba that relates to ours. None. Don't, you don't need your phone. Don't look for service. Don't look. Um, in Jamaica, you'll get a little note. Hey, if you'd like to talk on your phone, it's two forty-nine a minute. It's a buck of text. It's it'll tell you what the plan is, but I don't think you need a phone in two days in Jamaica. Calling home while on the ship. Satellite phones are available for an extra charge. Wi-Fi phone calls. It's all expensive. Just hey, uh, we're gone for nine days. Don't call me. It's a vacation. Page uh, five. Top uh, second one down is water. The water on the ship is safe to drink. The water on the ship is safe to drink. But when I travel, I always drink bottled water anyway. Because I don't want any trouble. So, so water. Will there be bottled water for us to take with us? All over the place for sale, yes. Will they have a bottle of water every day? No. Mm -hmm. But there will be a bottle. Uh, electricity. Power in Jamaica is 110, same as ours. On the ship is both. Can you do the electricity first? Both 220 and 110. If you're bringing a sleep apnea machine, don't forget a little short extension cord. You can never know where the plugins in the room are. And don't forget your 3 to 2 converter. You will not buy one of those on the ship or in Cuba. <laughs> no such thing as a 3 to 2 converter, right? If you have a sleep apnea machine. Otherwise, all you need to plug in it for is probably a curling iron, which there's a 110 in the bathroom, or you might want to charge your phone. And that might plug in might be across the room again. But there's 110 and 220, you don't need to bring your converters. So I was going to tell you to bring converters, you don't need the converters. Sir? Uh, on the water, you have the inclusivity package on the ship. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is go up and tell them that you want a bottle of water here or there, and then you can have bottled water put in your pack to take with you when you go on shore. Then you don't have to buy it when you're on shore. Uh, you got you got the the full package with your with your uh, ship uh, that, so you should be able to get bottled water on the ship to to take with you. Water toilets. It says in the public toilets, bring your own toilet paper. Unless you like that 40 grit stuff, you probably want your own toilet paper. There is typically a fee to use public facilities. Expect to pay. I need a couple kooks to be able to tip the guy that gives me the toilet paper that we don't like to go to the bathroom. But you're going to tip the guy to get in the toilet anyway. So he's going to give you paper. It's up to you to use it. Many of the toilets are not flushable paper. They want you to take the toilet paper and put it in a garbage can. It's a third world country, folks. It's what it is. Mm -hmm. Just be aware, they might suggest you don't flush your toilet paper. Anyway, um, 
Jamaica, <laughs> he's the other of Eastern Standard Time. So they're always going to be an hour ahead of us, right? When you get there, you lose an hour. Come home, you're going to gain that hour back. And then the weather. And I thought this was interesting. While exact temperatures aren't known, obviously, um, you got to expect Montego Bay to be from 67 to 87. Oh, that's a heck of a range. I go to weather.com, put in Havana, and see what the average temperatures are two days before you fly. That's going to tell you what it is. If it's extra warm, extra cold, you can pack according to what the weather's going to be when you're there. So all these guidelines do me no good at all. I'm going to tell you it's going to be hot, it's a little bit humid, and it's going to be gorgeous compared to what we have here. <laughs> and that's at 40. Because I don't know about you, but that wind's still cold. So it's going to be, you're going to have a lot of 70s and 80s guys. 70s and 80s, bring your shorts, bring your tannies, bring your, your lightweight stuff. We were on uh, Cuba, we were there in September. Um, it was two, three bottles of water a day. We, don't forget, you know, you're coming from cold. Don't forget you need to keep rehydrated. So drink a couple bottles of water a day. But the weather. Does the ship have a pool? Ship has a pool. Aboard the uh, ship, it talks about exactly that. It talks about this and that. You will have dinner, and this is on the back, uh, top of page six on the back cover. We will have our dinner. It's called Open Seating Basis. It starts at 6.30. Every night we'll have dinner together at 6.30. There's three restaurants. If you choose not to eat with the group, just let Jeff know, and they won't save you a seat. But it's always kind of nice to get back together at the end of the day. And 6.30 is the, the dining hall. We'll have reserved seats for you folks, so you can have a nice sit down and meet their other people in the group, as well as that's the dinner. Afterwards is a show. You can attend it, of course, you can do what you want. But um, the uh, uh, dinner's going to be at 6 o'clock. There's three restaurants, there's five bars I mentioned before, and uh, you can really eat where you want. You're going to get a nice choice of different entrees. Um, the dining hall is like you've done on a cruise ship. You get the menu, pick your appetizers, pick your main course, pick your desserts. So, excellent food. And I believe there is uh, one of them that is a uh, a la carte buffet style where you can go through. And uh, when I had read the stuff on the ship, and that one there, if you're just wanting to go casual with jeans and shorts, that is fine at that one there. And uh, they'll have that information on the ship, which one that is, and where to go for that one there. Uh, if you just want to relax, but none of them will allow you to come in swimsuits or anything like that. Our, our flip-flops or sandals, none of them allow sandals or flip-flops. Excuse me, you can have sandals. None of them allow flip-flops. None of them allow flip-flops. They are pretty barefoot then. <laughs> and so, uh, you can have tennis shoes but no, and sandals with no flip-flops. Inside this oyster piece, most of you have a yellow piece right behind it. That is the drink package that you've already we've included. So as you read through the drink package, there's your water. Mm -hmm. They have a premium package that's for top shelf. So when you read the top, you'll see it's got Bacardi and rum and gin and, and whiskeys and beer. And here's that water, sparkling mineral water, small bottles, sodas, Coca-Cola, et cetera, iced tea, juices, coffees. It's all on that list, okay? That's all included. Must be it, no? Below it is the premium package. You want up for top shelf stuff, you can buy it by the drink or you buy, I say this. 19 bucks a day, you know, 14 bucks a day, whatever. But there's your drink package details. Uh, last thing on this piece of the back, as you go down, gratuities. We already have it asked, gratuities. You'll see local guides, local driver, and gratuities for the crew staff. See where I'm at? Because mm -hmm. under gratuities, you're going to love that little one in dark. Gratuities for the crew of the crystal are included in the price of the cruise. So after the last day, you're not going to get a bill under the door for an extra 150 bucks. For what they, what's, what's, what's that for? It's already included. They're already properly tipped, which is great. Right above it, local guides, Jamaica or Cuba, $2 per half a day. See why they love Americans? $2 for half a day? That's not much money. Yeah. Drivers, $1, one kook for half a day. <laughs> Carry some one small, small money. If it's two of you, you might tip five for an hour, you know, or five for half a day, but two for half a day, it's not a lot of tips. 
That's why we're back to that cash. How much to take? $500 is going to go along with us. Unless Jeff, like he's did, bring me $200 back of soup cigars. You know, he doesn't need more of his. You had not heard about that? <laughs> Otherwise, everything else, guys, is truly in here. I mean, it's truly in here. The last thing on there talks about the U.S. Customs. This is the same as most international countries. $800 per person is duty free. $800 per person. They used to say you couldn't bring more than $100 of cigars. They had lifted that. It's now it's right in with the $800. If you want to bring $800 of cigars, you may. $800 of rum. Can't carry that much liquid. Never mind. Um, unless you buy the real expensive stuff. Well, you can uh, if you have more booze than that. They'll just charge you the, the duty the tax. So the whole goal of the duty free is when you get the little form that says the duty. How much did you? How many souvenirs did you buy? Just be realistic, but don't go over 800 bucks. You might cheat a little bit. If I got 400 dollars cigars, I might just put 200. What did you pay for them? Well, I bought these on the street. You buy cigars on the street, they're fake. They're not real. I don't care what the band says, I don't care what the box says. The stores that sell cigars are all government controlled. Every cigar costs the same at every store. Just so you know. Same as their, their rum, wonderful rum. But, so that sheet's really got everything for you. When you go through your pack, you'll see the name tags. I just always ask a favor. Love for you to wear these the first three days. And I know you're gonna look at me like, oh, but then I look like a tourist. You are a tourist. We just like to learn your names. Once we know your names, you don't have to wear them anymore. But if you do that for three days, Jeff appreciate it. Everybody in the room appreciate it. I'm sure you guys all know each other, right? No. Exactly. No. You don't. Um, so I'm please. one who I like I like all my little ducks in a row, and I'm the one who will lag in the back, making sure all my little ducks are headed in the right direction. And if you don't have a name tag on, I might just leave you in the back. And nice that, that tells me because I'm terrible with names. You know, I like those name tags myself the whole trip. And if she doesn't know my three names, then she can decide it's four or five. If she's there, I'm not. Um, you find four tags in there per couple, one, two per person. I tell you, fill all four out. Just put one on your big bag. And then put one in your big bag if it ever got tore off. You got an extra one. Not many people want to put it on their purse or their carry on because then you're. It's got that nice carry on flop. <laughs> That's a joke. That's a joke. But there's four of them in there. You only need one on your check bag. Put it on your big check bag. And that way, when we go to grab bags, once we get the bags, we can say, one, two, three, four, five, six, twenty, six, three. So put it on when? Now. Go home, put it on your bag. Fill them out, put them on your bag. Well, Those things are tougher than you think. Cabin assignments come when we get into the. You have your cabin assignment already. If you pull out uh, where it says, uh, it's in here. As is your insurance papers, oh, all the stuff is in there. You just want to take this packet the way it is. Because it's all in there. Is that the room? Number yellow. 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 Partial sheet yellow. The cover, the, the cover sheet is yellow. And then it'll be highlighted in yellow. It'll say category, deck, and cabin number. I see. There's you. It'll be highlighted in yellow. Everything's right there. So that way you'll know what your cabin number and where you're at. If you go online and look up to ship, it has a floor plan. You can actually then click on your floor and you can look at the picture. And you can see exactly where your room is in that hallway. So then when you get there, you'll know when I come off, it shows the elevator right here. When I come off the elevator, I got to make a right and then a left to go to my room. And, uh, but yeah, you can click right on the ship. Your cabin number is there. And you can go to your floor plan. And, and I got a real nice room, by the way. <laughs> nice room, closet. But uh, <laughs> security on and off the ship. Same as You've got to use these cards to turn off. Pacemaker. Pacemaker. Just tell them. It, and it's not a metal detector. It's, a, it's an on and off with, a, with your card. 
Yeah. Or no, you're on and off, so it shouldn't be yeah. an issue. Uh, they, they, they will have stuff there. Unless they added it. Yeah. They might have added it. Um, I'm going to look down the road. Just tell them. them. Otherwise, you guys have probably looked through theirs. Did you have any other questions? Did I flip the thing? No, I haven't yet. Uh, do, uh, we got, uh, the options is what we have left. Okay, so. Otherwise, everything you've heard Reb talked about has been included. So what more comes out of your pocket on this tour is those tips to those guides, the driver, right? Two bucks here, buck there, one cook there, two cooks here. Or they got two options that they're gonna offer you for evening activities in Havana. Uh, and they share will be paid if you, if you decide to do those, that will be billed on your room to your room. The first one is the Bona Vista Social Club. That is, has been voted on TripAdvisor as the number four uh, attraction. So I, was, I took this option. I went to this show. If you're a musician, you want to hear some great music, right, you can see it. It's on stage. It's, it's, it seems like they're just you know, incredible musicians. Um, the place was packed, but they both are. They normally start about 8.30, 9.30, 9.30 at night and go till about 11, 11.30. They're late night shows. This is how they do them. But off the ship, this was around $100. And it, it was transportation to and from two drinks and hors d'oeuvres. So you bring out the hors d'oeuvres, it's family style. You're gonna, they're gonna pack you in like sardines. At both shows, just how it is. But it was, you want to perfect, and you want music, that was music. It was really nice. And it's the number four attraction. So I was on that. And this yeah. is, this is the ones who used to be at the next one we're going to show. Yeah. I was going to ask, is the food safe there? Because we were told oh. by a doctor that you should be oh. careful. No, nah, our food was wonderful. Okay. We, we, I, I was on lambs. We ate all their food. Okay. It was wonderful. We had no issues. So that's attraction number four. So that's number four, and this, this one here is if you just want music, you're gonna, you're gonna enjoy this one here. The next one is, yeah, I just want to turn my volume back on. Okay. It's the cabaret. This is, the, the, the first one is an indoor theater. Right. This one is an outdoor, and this is the Glitz and the Glamour show. <laughs> the height of the stage. Outdoors. <laughs> but it's the glitz and the glamour. This is the, the place that was open before the embargo. These people, or this is the show. It's a, it's a variety show. It's got balance, it's got uh, a little bit of magic, it's got dance routines, it's got solos, it's got bands. We're going to practice that one tonight, Derek. <laughs> Wrong bird. Luck, lucky you lost that weight here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, so the chandeliers are the servers. Is that the servers with the chandeliers? I think that's the dancers up there for the song. <laughs> By the way, they're both two-hour shows. But again, you can just see the other one is just basic. They're just standing up there singing. I lost my boss on it. Like I said, it's just a lot of different uh, costume changes. <coughs> I'm just, it's an 18 minute video, so I'm just flipping <laughs> through the different things. Uh oh. Uh oh, here it is. It's up here. It's the Play the Green Girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a cabaret show, so think about that. I think so. Cabaret show. These are technically on, on, on board. These tickets are bought on board. So yeah, that's the cabaret show. What does that one cost? Uh, that was about 130. I would call it at 130, so just say 140. Just so you can count. And so that's the two main shows. And there will be other things that they, they may have. These are the two that they have offered to us as U.S. Uh, we're not going to be the only country on the ship. Uh, 
we're limited to a person-to-person -person visa. And so we have a few restrictions that other countries don't have. And so sometimes you may see something offered that is not available to us. Uh, there's one option that Kent and I talked about again today. We keep hoping that it's gonna, we're going to see a change. And right now, the change has not come across the Mayflower, but it, it may have already changed on the ship. And that is, on the one day, they have a half-day tour of Havana. And, the, and that same day as our half-day, they offer a full-day ag tour, where you get down a little bit further uh, out of the outskirts of Havana into more of the farm country. And I'm going to check when we get on board to see if that has been lifted yet. If it has, for Americans, to go on that, if it has, I will let you know. The only thing is, is being it's not part of our package here, you would have to pay for whatever that, that tour is in addition to it. Uh, We're sort of Jeff to grease the palms and see what we can do. And uh, so I'm going to try and see uh, if, if that's something we can get on as Americans. If we can, where it's been lifted, just hasn't come all the way through. Um, all the others, but on the ship they say yes, Americans can now do it. And then I will let you know that those who would want to do it, uh, I'll make sure you get signed up for that full day ag tour. And then you would be on that instead of the half day, and then we'll work with the Luis, uh, Luis, 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 to uh, make sure that he's aware of it. I'll work with him to make sure so we get everything changed that we can. The only thing is, is that we would forfeit. The, the half day tour, what we had already prepaid for, and you'd have to pay for that one. And that's what we build. That would be built on to your room. room. Oh, yeah, right. yeah, you would have to pay it. That, that would be built to your room. That would be. Will you have an opportunity to talk to us as a group to, if a bunch of us want to go on some of these events in Havana at night so that we're going with more of our people? To yes, the yes, we will take, uh, when we get on the cruise ship and we have a full cruise day before we get to Havana, and there's going to be all kinds, if you know, there's all kinds of things going on on the ship, and uh, we'll be able to have a chance to visit quite a bit on the ship there at different meals and things. And I'll find out who's interested in doing the cabaret show, who's interested in doing the other show, because uh, both of them are fantastic shows. And uh, Ken saw the, the Bona Vista, he loved it. Again, that. There you're, you're listening to the television music and that's the people who used to have one maybe at the cabaret and now they're, they're too old to be in that show there so they have this other show that they have developed where you're going to get just the music and, uh, and, and those things and, and it's a, again it's the number four and so it's, it's, it's a pretty good thing to see and uh, so we'll find out who's interested in going to what so we can try and make sure we have people grouped together and I see you know. And a real nice reason for having dinner together at night. Mm -hmm. Hey, I learned this today. I learned this today. And you can compare notes and then Jeff can always keep you updated on what's next. So the dinners at night are really nice to be together at 6 mm -hmm. So any, any other questions? We went through a lot of information here. We talked about the currency. We talked about where you can use it, where you can't if use it. If you a question, you can send your email, right? Yeah. No. You, if you have a question before we leave, yes, you can send me an email and give me a call. Yeah. Yes. Uh, questions we had come in. Super Bowl. I really don't know if we're going to be able to watch the Super Bowl on the ship. It's just going to depend upon if they're bringing it down Wi-Fi, if they're doing it through their satellite to, to pay for it, to bring it in. Uh, but it would have to be, if you're going to try and watch the Super Bowl, it would be purchasing the Wi-Fi packet and then trying to get it to download and stream and keep running. Uh, the touchdown may happen, but you may not know it until 10 minutes later, you know, until it gets all the way down. Uh, and I see Bill, Bill is getting ready to go, so what I'm going to do here is uh, for, for, for coming in today, Here's just a little token from the travel department. It's a magnetic flashlight. And uh, with two different lights on it. Do we have to personally confirm our 
airline reservations the night before we go? Uh, the airline reservations, uh, you know, you can go online to confirm that you're going to be there. Uh, we always check in. It just helps the process check in. You do not have to. If you if you have Delta airline miles already where you've been flying, make sure when you check in, you give them your Delta number so you get credit uh, for your flights, for your miles. But uh, Maria and I always check in the night before. It just makes it seems to go a lot smoother when uh, when we get there that morning. That way, all we have to do is tell them we're here, and they give us our luggage, the things to put on our luggage. It just saves time at the check-in because uh, we got everything already done. We got the, the suitcase prepaid. It just goes faster at check-in, and then you can uh, download your ticket onto your phone. Mm -hmm. uh, your boarding passes and, uh, and then your stuff. The only thing I typically ask, and I know you'd say that, um, very do important, you, do you just do you don't you change a lot of your booking. In other words, um, have you ever seen with the uh, with the group check-ins? Sometimes somebody will go to change seats and mess up the whole booking. So checking in's fine, but if you start moving things around, uh, please don't. <laughs> just please don't. You ever that? Uh, yeah. The other thing Suzanne mentioned, uh, we wish you reminded me, and thank you, Suzanne, because I had it in my notes, and then I can't see my notes at the bottom of my page here, uh, is suitcase, your large bag, Delta does charge $25 check bag fee. for the check bag fee uh, on, on your big suitcase. Is that what the POV stands for, fan delivery? Or? Hmm. I saw that on the ticket, POE. Well, that, that would be the bag you pay, pay on delivery, yeah. Okay. Yeah, check bag. You, you, for your check bag, you pay that when you get done. Use your credit card when you check in. Do we have a check bag? Huh? Do we have a check bag? I don't know. Are you, do you have a big suitcase yeah, that you're going to check? Then yes, you have a check bag. I have no idea what you're bringing, so I can't answer that question. You know those speedos don't take up much space. Down south, <laughs> huh? That bag that you gave us to go south. Down. <laughs> Oh no, that's a carry-on bag. Carry no, I'm no. You, your carry-on bags, I did not uh, provide carry-on bags. Those, those, that, that, that was a different year. Yeah, this. So the carry-on bags this year, I bought expensive flashlights. Okay. Wait a minute. And uh, that twenty-five dollar fee is when you get on your plane here with itself, and when you get on your plane down there to come back. Come back. Twenty-five dollar fee for your suitcase. Both ways. And your credit card is good. Yeah, your credit card will take care of that. I mean, yeah.